all know that any military action on land is horribly destructive to both human life and the environment. But given that water makes up over 70% of the Earth's surface and the U.S. empire has expanded to nearly every corner of the planet, it's important to consider the effect the military machine has on our oceanic counterparts, too. And I'm not even talking about actual war with bombs and bullets. See, as the U.S. and China prepare to take part in the world's largest naval exercise in history this week, it's crucial to understand just how military exercises at sea affect ocean life. The multi-million dollar drill known as RIMPAC, or the Rim of the Pacific exercise, will begin at the Joint Base Pearl Harbor, and up to 23 countries will be participating. But alas, if the Navy's history of terrorizing marine life is any indication, then the fishies of the Pacific better brace themselves for a massive environmental price tag. You see, when the Navy conducts its underwater operations, very often sea creatures die. And I'm not just referring to when the U.S. dropped four unarmed bombs on the Great Barrier Reef last year. That's because the use of sonar testing to navigate ships sends sound waves through the ocean. And animals like whales that depend on their hearing for basic aspects of survival like finding food are interfered with and die. And according to the Navy's own estimates for their 2014 to 2018 exercises, quote, sonar training and testing might unintentionally harm marine mammals 2.8 million times a year over five years. The injuries inflicted on mammals like dolphins and whales include deafness and other physical trauma, such as bleeding in the brain. The results? Dead whales washing ashore on beaches from the Bahamas to Greece. And while environmentalists are occasionally successful in winning cases against the federal government to protect ocean life, the lawsuits ultimately do little to curb the Navy's impact. Because guess what? Just like on land, the military is pretty much exempt from international law at sea. And just like the assault on our civil liberties, the roots of the military's aquatic exceptionalism can be traced right back to the war on terror. That's because way back in 2003, President Bush signed measures into law to side sweep the Marine Mammal Protection Act, quote, making it easier to use low frequency sonar suspected of harming whales and dolphins. Not only that, but the Pentagon also made sure to skirt the Endangered Species Act by exempting U.S. military bases from following basic habitat protection requirements. Wow. So while the government was using the war on terror to attack civil liberties and violate international law abroad, it also stripped the few regulations in place that protected marine life from international war games. So it's not a surprise that as the years have gone by, the lethal impact the Navy has had on sea creatures has only increased. And the virtual immunity from environmental laws, the effect is only slated to become more deadly. But exempting our military from environmental regulations does not only result in the destruction of our oceans. You see, the Pentagon is the world's biggest polluting institution in the world, producing up to 750,000 tons of hazardous waste every year, including the largest user of petroleum products. And the cherry on top? It's exempt from international climate agreements, too. Think of all the awful oil companies and chemical corporations that had to beat to win that title. <laughs> But look, at the very least, we as humans are able to use our voices when military immunity results in harmful effects on our health and destruction to our environment. If only whales, dolphins, and all other ocean-dwelling life were so lucky.